As we discussed previously, the complement system actually consists of two different major pathways. We have the classical pathway that we focused on previously, and we have the alternative pathway that we're going to focus on in this lecture. So what exactly is the major difference between these two pathways? Well, as we saw previously, to initiate and activate the classical pathway, an antibody must find and must bind to its complement antigen to form the antibody antigen complex and then that antibody antigen complex goes on to the C1 protein of the classical pathway and activates it and then the C1 protein can go on to activate the C2 and C4 and that forms a complex known as CB4, uh, C4B, C2B complex and then that activates C3 which in turn activates C5 and that produces our membrane attack complex MAC MAC and that basically initiates many different types of mechanisms that eventually protect our body from different types of pathogenic agents and antigens. Now what about the alternative pathway? Well unlike the classical pathway which needs the presence of our antibody antigen complex to initiate the alternative pathway can be triggered even in the absence of the antibody body antigen complex. The question is how? Well, it turns out that one of the major agents, one of the major proteins in the complement system we call C3 does not actually need something to activate itself. So it can spontaneously break down into its active form to form the C3B and C3A. Now, the thing is, under normal conditions, when we don't have any pathogenic agents, for example, bacterial cells in our body, when we only have these normal cells around these molecules, what happens is the C3B quickly attaches onto a special inhibitory protein found on the membrane of nearby healthy cell. And that inhibitory protein inhibits and deactivates the C3B molecule. Molecule. And then that molecule is essentially recycled to form something else, perhaps another C3 molecule. So under normal conditions, in the absence of any type of pathogens, this is usually what happens. C3 spontaneously breaks down, but then this is quickly recycled, it's inhibited, and then recycled. Now, what happens if we do have some type of pathogen, for example, bacterial cells nearby this type of reaction? So this is shown in diagram two. Let's suppose now we have this same spontaneous reaction that takes place to form the C3B and C3A. Now because we don't have any nearby healthy cell, we only have bacterial cells, those bacterial cells don't actually have any of these inhibitor proteins to deactivate the 3CB molecules. And so because of that, the 3CB, uh, the C3B molecules basically go on on and react with another molecule of the protein known as factor B. And then when they combine, they form the three of the C3BBB complex and this is the major agent that is involved in the alternative pathway. What this molecule is, it's basically a, three, a C3 convertase and what that means is its main substrate is the C3 molecule and it activates the C3 in two ways. So a is basically the following pathway. So we have the C3 that spontaneously breaks down into our C3A and C3B. And then the C3B quickly reacts with the factor B to form the C3BBB complex. Now this complex can do one of two things. It can either once again react with another C3 and then it forms the C3B and C3A and then it combines with another C3B to form the C3BBBC3B complex. And then this is basically a molecule that can go on to activate the C5 protein. And remember, from our classical pathway discussion, it's the C5 that is responsible for essentially building the membrane attack complexes that can go 
on to the membrane of those infected or pathogenic cells and essentially build that water channel that will lyse that cell and kill off that cell. So once we form this pathway in process A, once we form this complex in process A, it goes on, activates C5, C5, C5 is broken down into C5A and C5B, and it's C5B that basically uh, calls upon C6, C7, C8. They combine to form that membrane attack complex that forms that water channel on that membrane that lyses that cell. Now, the other pathway is pathway B, and pathway B is actually an amplification process. So what we mean by that is the following. So we can either go this way or this molecule can have a positive feedback effect on C3. So basically it goes on back to C3, it cleaves the C3 to form even more C3B molecules. And now these same C3B molecules can be used again here with the factor B to form even more of these complexes. So this is a positive feedback loop because this that is formed in process B can go on to this to the beginning of the process and amplify the formation of this complex which, which can then follow process A and go on to form many of these membrane attack complexes. So this is essentially the other major pathway of the complement system we call alternative pathway. So this one does not involve the presence or does not require the presence of antibody antigen complexes. On the other hand, the classical pathway actually needs these antibody antigen complexes complexes to actually take place. Now, the final component I'd like to talk about is how do we actually regulate the complement system? So we don't always want the complement system to actually be activated because it's very, very energy consuming. And so if we don't have any types of pathogens in our body, why would we want the complement system to be activated? Well, we don't. And the way that we regulate it by, by using many different types of proteins, for example, three proteins that are commonly used by the body to basically regulate and deactivate some of these agents are the following three proteins. So let's begin with factor I. Factor I is a protein that can basically deactivate the C3B molecule. So the C3B molecule that needs to be used with factor B to form this complex can basically be activated by factor I. And once we deactivate this, it cannot combine with factor B, and so it cannot follow this alternative pathway. Now, another protein is factor H. And factor H actually removes the BB protein from this complex, once again deactivating this pathway. And finally, we also have another important agent that plays a role in the classical pathway, and that is the C1 inhibitor. So remember, the C1 is that initial protein that needs to be activated by the antibody antigen complex in the classical pathway. And what this C1 inhibitor does is it goes on to bind to that C1 complex in the classical pathway and inhibits the activation of C2 and C4, and so that cannot form the C4B, C2A, C2B complex, and so we cannot activate C3. And so this, these proteins are commonly used as well as many others to basically downregulate and control our complement system because we don't always want the system to actually be activated.